Hey guys, welcome back. It's Elsie. Thanks so much for watching my video. Today I will be showing you a short tutorial on how to use Copic markers. I've been really enjoying learning how to use these recently. Um, they're alcohol-based markers and so they blend really well, which is what I've really been enjoying about them. What I love about these Copic markers is that they actually have two tips. There's the brush side, which is great for soft edges and blending. And then there's the chisel side, which is great for a background to filling in large areas of space. For this tutorial, I will be using this Strathmore colored pencil paper. This paper holds up really well with alcohol inks and I'm really pleased with it. I'm also using the Micron inking pen. These uh, are waterproof and alcohol proof, as well as the Jelly Roll white ink pen, which is just super fun and creates a lot of contrast and just really fun to use. And I also bought these two markers separate from the pack, so I'll be using them a little bit too. I also love this thing. I'm not actually sure what the correct term is, but it's kind of like a blender. It's not Copic brand, it's Master's Touch. I got it at Hobby Lobby for like five bucks, but it's great and it helps with blending alcohol-based markers. Before I begin, I always like to make little color swatches with the markers I'll be using, just so I'm absolutely confident with which color I'm gonna use before I put it down on paper, because alcohol markers, as you will quickly find out, do not erase, and once they're down, they're pretty much permanent. Um, so here I will be just beginning practicing blending skin tones. I'll be starting with a lighter skin tone first, no matter what with alcohol markers. I found it's better just to start with a light color. Otherwise, uh, it won't show up later on. You can always go light to dark, but you can never go dark to light with these markers. The beauty of these markers is that they blend really well, especially when you use two similar tones. Um, so what's nice about these is you get the marker effect without the harsh lines and jagged edges of using a regular typical marker, such as Crayola or some other knockoff brand of Copic markers. As I begin blending, I'm using the base color E00. This one's a very subtle, soft color, and it really blends the darker color into the lighter color nicely without a lot of harsh, jagged edges. And then I'm going over it with the Master's Touch blending alcohol pen that one really brings everything together and gives the skin the smoothness that I'm looking for. But a tip I quickly realized was not to um, apply too much ink at one time and let your paper dry between different layers. Otherwise, your paper will get really weighed down with all of the ink and it can be damaging to the paper in the long run. Here I'm beginning with a darker skin tone. This is more of a the skin tone palette that I used for the Moana drawing. Um, what I really don't care for about this marker set, I love Copic and I don't really have any complaints, except for this pack of six skin tones, they have the E15 and the E18 markers, which are the darkest they get. But the problem is the E18 is so dark compared to the E15 marker that it's really hard to blend the two out. So if I could make any change about this set, I would request that instead of the E18, maybe do something a little lighter or maybe put a marker in between the two of them because it's hard to use the E18 marker and properly blend it. Um, as you'll see here, I'll do my best to blend the two together, but I kind of need a happy medium between the two. Another thing I would maybe recommend is putting some reds in this set. Of course, I do know it's only a set of six, so really this is on me. I just need to suck it up and buy some more markers, even though they're so expensive. Maybe I'll take out a mortgage on my cat or something. But to really get that beautiful, dark, rich color that lots of darker skin tones have, I'm going to need a little more than just the six colors they provided. So overall, I'm really happy with how the Copic markers blend and how they retain their color. Um, I guess the only thing I need to work on now is adding to my Copic collection so I have more markers in the long run. But that's just a me problem. That has nothing to do with the brand itself. I'm going to speed this part up just a little bit. I'm just wanting to show you how nicely the colors blend together, especially when you have the colors that are very similar. So for the first one, I did the E00 and the E02 marker, and they blended really nice. Next, I did, I believe, the E11 and E13, and they blended well too. But then, as you can see, E15 and E18 did not blend well at all. Um, again, I think that's just uh, one of the problems with this set. It doesn't really have a happy middle between E18 and E15. I'm going to fast forward this part too. This is me just drawing a really quick sketch of, I guess, a little fairy girl. Um, I'm not really putting a lot of effort into this sketch. It's really just to practice shading and skin tones. So please excuse the anatomy. I know it's not perfect, um, but I'm just sketching out a quick little drawing here um, before I actually begin the inking process. I found, at least in my style, that it's easier to do the sketch and then add the dark um, Micron pen ink 
over top of it and then do the alcohol ink last. I think this is partly due to me just really enjoying being able to see the lines and see absolutely for certain where I'm supposed to put the ink. Uh, I always think it's easier to do the line art first. But maybe if I get more comfortable with Copic markers, I'll decide to branch off and try doing the markers first before I do the line art. Who knows? It's really important to make sure you have the right kind of pen when doing line art for Copic markers because they are alcohol ink based and they contain alcohol in them. You don't want to use just a typical normal uh, permanent marker like a Sharpie because those, I've quickly found out the hard way, will tend to bleed and then your line art will be completely smudged and ruined. Next, since we're working from the darkest to lightest colors, it's important to see where your light is coming from, where your light source is. And so in this drawing, it's coming from the upper left hand corner down toward the drawing. So because of this, I'm just doing a quick outline of where I want the light to hit her. Um, I've decided on her cheekbones, on the tip of her nose, and in her forehead, and then on her shoulders a little bit, but most of the light will be coming in on her face. This is important just to do beforehand so you know where to do the lightest colors first. I tend to erase these little marks uh, before I start drawing, but it's good just to have that idea in your head before you just go willy-nilly and start to draw something that you quickly realize you can't erase. So I'm beginning with the lightest colors, filling in the areas I decided the light should be hitting most dramatically. Here I'm beginning with the E00 marker since that is my lightest marker. And I'm just filling in the lightest spots, going over them a couple times if I want to make it a little more dramatic. But here I am really just doing the lightest parts of her face. Um, and then next I will be taking a slightly darker marker and going over the darker areas. Again, this is still going to be the lighter areas comparatively to the rest of her face but they're the areas that the light isn't hitting so dramatically as the areas of the E00 marker. I think for any kind of drawing, especially when you're using markers that don't erase, but just any drawing in particular, it's always good to have a reference piece. Here, I didn't have a reference. I was more focused on just experimenting with blending and just trying to get a feel for the markers. But if I was to do this piece for a more serious project or even a commission, I would definitely want to be using some sort of reference as far as lighting goes and anatomy. But like I said, it was just for fun, just to get a feel for markers and to see how they blend. So I wasn't too focused on that. Next, I'm really just focusing on blending out these base colors. I'm using a lot of the E00 marker again, just to blend it out. I'm still trying to keep the certain areas I decided earlier to be lighter. I'm trying to keep those light while still being able to blend everything together. And next I'm going over with the E15 marker um, with the shadows more on the her left, our right side of the face, and underneath the nose. I'll blend these out again, but for now I'm just trying to get the basic shapes and the basic shadows. Next, as I begin her chest and her shoulders, I'm using the chisel side of the marker. This is great for filling up big areas of space. Um, it looks a little choppy at first, but as I blend other colors, the alcohol bleeds together and really fills it out and gives it that nice smooth look that I'm looking for. And then finally, last, I will be taking the darkest marker, the E18, to go over the darkest parts of her head um, and in the shadows. I'm using this for her eyebrows, for underneath her eyebrows, and then for the shadows for part of her lip and in between her ear, um, as well as the shadows of her hair. I think at this point, I still wasn't sure if I was going to do her hair brown or just leave it white. I ended up leaving it white, but at this point, if I was to have started begin coloring it, I would have started using the lighter colors to layer up the base. Next, I'm just blending out all of the dark shadows. I'm using the E15 marker as well as some of the lighter colors just to kind of blend out the dark edges and give it a more smooth look since shadows usually, especially on portraits, are not sharp, distinct, contrasting lines. They're more blended and smooth. But even though they are blended, I still want them to be distinct. Next, I'm gonna begin the background and I'm using my one and only blue Copic marker. I love this marker, it is my pride and joy. It is my only blue marker that I have in Copic and I love it with my entire being. It's, um, because it's my only one, I'm not gonna be doing a lot of contrast with the background. I'm really just doing this to make the portrait stand out quite a bit. But I do love this color, it's probably one of my favorites, so I wasn't too disappointed that it's the only one. If I was only to have one blue marker, it would be this marker. Next, I'm doing my favorite part, which is adding the details with the jelly roll pen. My f I actually got three bends in this set. I got a size five, a size eight, and a size 10. But I really only used the size 10 
It's the most vibrant and it really picks up well and shows up on drawings. Um, I'm using this one a lot just for her hair and to add some details that normally wouldn't show up if I was not to use the marker. Next, I'm using these really, really cheap markers. These, they're like so off-brand, they don't even really have a name. I'm not sure what they are, but I'm using them just to add little color to her um, green pieces in her hair as well as her eyes. Um, I don't know what kind they are, so I'm not even going to try to guess. They're really poor quality, but they serve the purpose for this area. And then next, I'm just adding a little more final details to her hair, adding some lighter colors. I still want her hair to be mostly really white, almost blonde, so I'm not adding a lot of details. At this point, the piece is pretty much finished. Um, if I wanted to keep going, I would maybe use colored pencils or other Copic markers. But this was just a quick practice sketch to get comfortable blending and get comfortable with the markers. Overall, I don't have any complaints with them. I love them a lot and they're really fun. I just need to buy more and expand my um, number of them so that I can do more pieces that aren't just with the same skin tones provided. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and that you're encouraged to try your own hand at these markers sometime because they're a lot of fun. Um, so until next time, see you later.